Hello! Tucker always finds the most interesting people to interview. Well, some recent high-profile events in Europe indicate, and some have said this, that Islam in some of its forms could be hazardous to people's health. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting way of phrasing that there, Tucker. But in Australia, it is Muslims who are declaring they're the ones who need safe spaces. From Muslim terrorists? I can see that. A group called the Islamic Council of Victoria, which says it represents 200,000 Muslims in Australia, is calling on the government there to fund a series of safe spaces where they say Muslims can safely express, this is a quote, inflammatory views that would cause trouble if voiced publicly. Radicalized ideology. That's what I just heard. This is part of the de-radicalization process. <laughs> is it now? Blair Amani is the executive director of Equality for Her. She's an American Muslim. She said safe spaces would be a good idea here. Blair Amani joins us tonight. So, Blair, what exactly would a safe space for Muslims look like? What does that mean exactly? Well, first, I think we need to start by understanding that everybody kind of misunderstands what a safe space means. And so for me today, I'm talking about safe spaces being somewhere where you can be who you are without fear of being surveilled, having violence committed against you, or being harassed. Well, good luck with that. With the way our society is now, as polarized as everything is, you're not going to find that shit anywhere, not even in a safe space. Come on. And I think it's a good idea to have everywhere. America was built on the idea that we could express our religious freedoms, that we can have free speech. You know, people always say that our country was built on freedom of speech. And it occurred to me as I was watching this and cutting it up that uh, freedom of speech was the First Amendment. It was the first thing that they went, oh shit, we should have added this too. So you can't really say it was founded or built on freedom of speech. That was a oops. That was our first first big oops. <laughs> speech. I know that's something that you very much believe in. Yes. And I think it's, you know, a necessary thing. And we're talking about safe spaces for Muslims. We need to recognize that we've been surveilled for a very long time. I converted to Islam two years ago. But for folks who have been Muslim in living in America, it's a crisis for them because, you know, you're being surveilled, you're being watched, and children are being affected. Well, why are you being surveilled and watched? I mean, it isn't just because you're a Muslim. I know a lot of Muslim guys, and they're not being fucking surveilled or watched. Like, what? There's usually a reason. I think there kind of has to be a reason. Doesn't there have to be? I mean, there's got to be some sort of reason. I'm not entirely sure. I don't really know what Obama did to what Bush did. Uh, fucking, it's all so confusing now. But uh, th there's got to be some sort of there there for, you know? So, w we may have to stop you there. Why do you think law enforcement agencies would put Muslims under surveillance? Well, obviously because of the, you know, the counterterrorism efforts, but... But, I love that there's always a but. Because Muslims are terrorists a lot of the time. That's why. But, like, the but, it's the but. It's the but that pisses people off. People don't want to hear the but people want to hear what's being done about it in your community what are you doing about it in your community this is happening in your community how are you helping in your community we don't want to hear the but the but is what makes people angry when but what is it i'm sorry what is that why would there be counterterrorism efforts aimed at muslims come on tucker you're a smart guy you know why that is he's leading you bitch he wants you to say radical islam <laughs> like come on no I'm, I'm a man who asks questions and and i'm asking a question about the statement you just made what's the answer absolutely well there are you know acts of terror committed in the name of Allah that do not you know reflect the muslim community but they do reflect the muslim religion and the muslim community is built up around the muslim religion so therefore However, there is this. Well, they may or they may not, but but you'll you'll concede this is not entirely random. It's not that the U.S. government or police departments are just like looking for some religious group to persecute, or, or is that what you're saying? I am saying that. Of course, she's saying that. You know, the, the United then States government has been in the business of doing that for quite really? a long time. So why don't right they, now, do they do it to the Amish? Wait, hold on a second. Why don't they do it to the Amish, or why don't they do it to Hasidic Jews? I mean, they're a set apart community, speak a different language, not assimilated. But I don't see a lot of a lot of terror attacks committed by those groups. Have you? Good question, Tucker. It's not profitable right now to be, you know, speaking against these other groups. Right now, it's very profitable to be speaking against Muslims because it's, you know, feeding into this wartime effort. The war against Muslim terrorism. Uh huh. War okay. cells. Okay, but look, I mean, we can debate the details here, but it's I think it's important to acknowledge a baseline, and that is that there have been an awful lot of attacks 
where actual people died in the United States and in Europe committed by people saying really clearly we're acting in the name of Islam. And other Muslims say, you don't act in my name and you're perverting our religion or whatever. But there's still people who have killed a lot of other people in the name of Islam. So it's not like some mass fantasy that law enforcement is acting out of. This is a real thing. And I don't understand why groups like yours won't acknowledge the reality of that because it, it is there. It's true. Good point, Tucker. I don't understand why other groups won't acknowledge that violence isn't something that's exclusive to the Muslim community. No it's not that. exclusive to Islam. It's not exclusive to, you know, my religion. And so... But it is a problem, I think. Uh, this, this whole... Uh, it's not who's doing it. It's what's being done that's the problem. It's what's being done by who's doing it. That's the problem. It's all the problem. Like it, you can't you can't just say, well, it's violence. That's yeah, sure. Nobody's arguing that violence is a fucking problem. But right now, we're looking at the people that are committing the violence that we're fucking paying attention to because the shit's getting out of control. It's getting out of hand. Kids are getting blown up at concerts now. That shit ain't fucking cool. And you need to be more on the that shit ain't fucking cool train than you do on the, well, it's violence that's the problem. It's the fucking guns don't kill people, people don't kill people, but in reverse. It's the, well, people don't kill people, guns kill people. <laughs> Some asshole still is pulling the fucking trigger which is Islam, but we see people being targeted in a way that's extremely unfair. And we also have this rise of white supremacist and, you know, quote, alt-right, you know, violence that's being committed. Don't spare me. That's it's, too dumb. I mean, I'm, I'm so, no, you know, we but can't actually, it's that not, it's I mean, happening, look, if you're reading only Salon all day, maybe you've been convinced of that. But the truth is there are hard numbers kept by the U.S. government. Maybe they run on this plot, too. Of course they are, Tucker. Wartime effort, remember? That show exactly the number of people who died and how in terror attacks in the United States. And the truth is, there's no comparison. There actually is a problem with people self-identifying as Muslims, murdering other people in the name of Islam. I don't think you're implicated in that. I'm not saying you are. But I just don't know why you're not more upset at them. I'm an Episcopalian. If there are Episcopalians setting off bombs in the I'm name not upset, of... Tucker. Okay, but what you're doing is coming on and lecturing the U.S. government for being racist and mean to Muslims. Why well, don't you say, well, there's a real problem in our community. We're trying to do something about it, but maybe they should stop like surveilling us so much. That would be a fair, a fair thing to say. But instead, it's like it's always the fault of the larger society, and that just you know what? That's just silly. Well, they say that shit because they're not working on the problem in their community. Pure and simple. If they were actually working on the problem in their community, then there would be improvements being made, and fucking they would be able to say that shit without people <laughs> calling out for fucking bullshit. But it isn't happening. But we, we don't want to focus on that because that's not the problem. You all are the problem. Fair. You see what I mean? Fair. She at least says fair. Okay. Well, I guess that's a stepping stone. Foot in the door and all that. Very fair. Not even very fair. Just, just fair. Yeah, that's fair. But fuck it. Well, Fair. I think, you know, it's it's ridiculous that the, the idea that we can't have those safe spaces, like we were saying, is, is something that's out of the question. Nobody's questioning whether or not it's ridiculous to have them. We know it's ridiculous to have them. We're questioning why you think you need to have them. What it is you think you're going to be doing there that's going to be so beneficial. And why you can't do that in your own religious and community centers. That's the question. The, the truth is that, you know, Muslims are being targeted in ways, and, and truly, there are other communities that need, that, other communities that need safe spaces, which so, includes so the LGBTQ community, okay, the black so we, community. Okay. There needs to be spaces where people I, are I'm free not sure you're not to speak harassed. on their behalf, too. Uh, but I, I feel like I'm harassed a lot online, whatever. I mean, I guess we're all victims here, but here's the, here's the question. <laughs> uh, I, 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 we're all victims here. Fuck it, whatever. <laughs> Tucker cracks me up. What would Muslims say in safe spaces that they wouldn't say in public, do you think? Well, I don't speak for all Muslims, and I actually am a, a black queer m woman in, in addition to being a Muslim. Oh, of course you are. Um, but, so from my own experience, you know, when I go to the airport and I go to untangle, you know, a pair of headphones and I get, you know, visited by somebody from TSA, it's that type of thing. Because <laughs> they think you're wiring up a bomb? <laughs> well, 
I don't know. There's a little bit of there there. I, bombs on planes and all that. We have to look at the fact that it's not necessarily so inflammatory things, it's the perception. in the safe space? No, no, this is a sincere question, though. You're asking for someone, uh, not you, I guess, to pay for a safe space where people can say whatever they want. Like, that's what's the funniest part. It, it, it's, it, it's, I still go back to that quote in the beginning. Say, say, you know, controversial ideas that you can't say in public space. Like, you want taxpayers to pay for you to have a place to radicalize people. That's what this fucking sounds like to me. I, I don't understand how it can sound any other way. And I want examples of the kind of things that Muslims believe they could only say in a so-called safe space and could not say, for example, on this show or on a street corner. Like, what kinds of things would they be saying in these safe I spaces? I don't think it's necessarily something that they can't say elsewhere, but it's, you know, spaces have inter internal community dialogues to be able to hash things out, to be able to have these complicated discussions. Well, fucking have them in your mosques, in your religious center. In your you're all so devout, y'all go to fucking church. Do to fucking church. You can't do to church. Make an outreach problem, program for people that fucking don't go to church. Like, what? And something else that, you know, I really want to be out in the forefront that the Islamic Council of Victoria has also done in collaboration with the Board of Imams is speaking out against violence against women. These type of, you know, internal community dialogues acknowledging that there's an right. issue of violence against women and that, you know, there needs to be more In the Muslim community, there's a problem. In all communities, there is an okay. issue of violence against See, there it is again. It's not, <laughs> you know, it's not focused on the one. It's just the violence at all. We're, yeah, it's just the violence at all. We're not targeting anybody. You know, we know where the fucking problem is, but we're just addressing violence altogether. Well, if that fucking works, awesome. But that shit ain't working. So have you noticed that have you noticed that all identity politics kind of converges in the end? So it's not just about Muslims. It's about the LBGT community. It's about black. It's like, you know, at some point. Well, some of us, like myself, exist in all of those communities. It's not identity politics when it's your life. But do you also it's, you know, OK. <laughs> Tucker. Uh, just mumbled invalidation to make me laugh. But don't you also think that primarily you're an American? Aren't we all first and foremost Americans? I'm black first. End of conversation. Thanks, Blair. Holy fucking shit. She's not even a Muslim first. The Muslim representative isn't even fucking Muslim first. Jesus Christ. <laughs>